Good afternoon, guys. Welcome back into my channel. So in this demo and lecture, we're going to talk about Amazon EC2. So as you follow, if you follow along with me here, you will see I'm actually on the docs.aws.amazon.com. So Amazon EC2 is one of the most popular of AWS offering. So EC2 is stand for Elastic Compute Cloud is equal to the infrastructure as service with AWS. So what EC2 consists of, it mainly consists in the capability of renting virtual machine EC2 storing data on virtual drive, EBS, and distributing load across machine, ELB. And it's scaling the service using an auto scaling group, ASG, and multiple other things that, so knowing EC2 is the fundamental to understand how the cloud works. So, if you look here, you would see this is this question here. What is EC2 and question mark? So Amazon EC2, Amazon Cloud, I mean, Amazon Elastic, Cloud, Elastic Compute Cloud EC2 provides scalable computing capability, I mean, capacity in the Amazon Web Services, AWS Cloud. So using Amazon EC2 eliminates you your need to invest in hardware upfront. So you can develop and deploy applications faster. You can use Amazon EC2 to launch as many as a few virtual servers as you need, configure security and networking and manage storage, Amazon EC2 enables you to scale up or down to handle changes. It requires or sparks in popularity reducing your need to forecast traffic. So they got a future on EC2. So feature of Amazon EC2. So Amazon EC2 provides the following features. Virtual computing environment known as instance. We configure templates for your instance known, known as Amazon Machine Image, which is AMI, that packages the bits you need to for your server, including the operation system and additional software. So variables of configuration of CPU, memory, storage, and networking capacity for your instances, known as instances type, instance types. So secure login information for your instance using key pair. AWS stores the public key and you store the private key in secure place. So if you take your time to to go over different features that EC, that you can do with EC2, you could visit this website yourself and just um, <clears throat> look at different things that what EC2 is. And this is the pricing of Amazon EC2. So bang, bang, bang. So let's see here. So you could use EC2 for storage volume, persistent storage volume, firewall that enable you to specify the protocol port in source IP range. Sorry. And um, static IP address for dynamic cloud compute, metadata known as tags, virtual network you can create that logically isolated from the rest of the AWS cloud, and you can optimally connect to your own network known as virtual private cloud, VPC. So again, these are the things that you can do with EC2. 
So, by the way, let's just go ahead and drop into the portal and start create our first EC2. Just click here. Launch an instance. That's in case if you already have one. Let me see. Uh, migrate the server. So in our case, we're going to click on instance. Say launch on instance. So I can give it a name. I can give it a name. I can call this um Ubuntu. I could call this Ubuntu web server. Okay. And now application and OS images, so Amazon machine, I mean, Amazon machine image, I could select whatever image that I want to put on this server. I prefer Ubuntu. Now be careful that when you choose these, make sure that you choose an image if you want to pay for a free tier eligibility. So you can click here and see all of the images that are available for a free tier. So you get Ubuntu Server 22.04 TLTS HVM SSD volume type. You have the other one down here too. These are two. These two ones here are free tier. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean about the free tier. See, say here, like as you look here, you will see that there's a Mac OS. If I click on the Mac OS here, this is not a free tier. So this is not a free tier. So should you want to, to get, I mean, to, to use this Mac OS Ventura for MacBook Pro, this is not a free tier. This is not a free tier application. So you have to make sure that you take your own risk to pay for that. Dude, this is the one that you would be, you would want to use. But like I said, in my case, I just want to use the, the, the free tier. So when you scroll down here, you see it says that description. So canonical Ubuntu 2.2, I mean, yeah, 22.04 LTS. Verify provider, so architecture, that's if you want to choose the 64-bit versus 32-bit or 64-bit AMR. So you could choose which um which architecture that, that will meet your, your requirement. Now, for the instance type, for the instance type, let's say, let me click here. So on the instance type, you see here it says that the instance that I choose is a free tier, but you could compare instance type. So whatever instance that you want to choose and what are the capacity? What, like you see here, it says the instance type in the vCPU, the architecture, the memory gigabit, the storage and the storage type and the network performances. So this is pretty handy. You could um, check this yourself. So I don't need to choose any instance type. So I will just hit cancel. I was just open this for just for um, I mean the instruction purposes. But um, I will scroll down, and once I get there to the key pair, I will create a security group just to I will create a security group so 
Now, hold up. Let's see. Is that the security group? So now I wanted to talk about the key pair here. So I'm going to create a new, I mean, key pair, not the security group. I apologize for that. So I'm going to click there, like create a new key pair. So the RSA might be the one. So you can choose the RSA encrypted. You can choose the private key file format. So basically what that is, is that the, what that is, is that the, so, so we'll, we'll be using the RSA encrypted. So this is good. And then the key pair format. So if you have a Mac, Book Pro or Linux or Windows, you can use the perm format here. But if, but for example, if you use a Windows 7 or Windows 8 or whatever that you use, so in order for you to SSH into the machine, you then you you can need to use the 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 that PPK for putty. Cause you're gonna use, you're gonna need to use party so you could SSH into the machine. So remember that anything else but Windows 7 and Windows 8, you could choose perm, else, PPK. So that should be clear enough. So I'm going to create this keeper and I'm going to download it. So I could call this my keeper. Just give it a name, my keeper. And I could hit create. Now you could see here it's downloading automatically in the bottom here. So um so then the other thing again I need to do is to make sure that so I call this my keeper. Now for the security, I mean, for the network settings, see, on the network settings, so you see it says that network info, so the VPC, which is virtual private, I mean, virtual private cloud, you get a subnet info, you get the auto, auto, you get the auto, You get the auto assign public IP address, which I'm gonna leave it like that. It's enabled. Now for firewall security group, um, I don't have to create one. Oh, it says yeah. I mean, of course, you are a security group. It's already been selected by default, so I could just leave it like that. So it says that we'll create a new security group calling lunch, lunch wizard one, which is okay. So, so next we have to go into network, I mean, network settings. So now if you observe here, you will see it says that it's gonna allow SSH traffic from anywhere which is a zero that zero that zero that zero slash zero which means anywhere so if you want to <clears throat> you could make your own custom configuration you wanted to <clears throat> to receive traffic from from a particular source into a particular source like down here you would just click custom or you would click my ip address but I prefer just let it be receiving traffic from anywhere. So I'm going to leave this like that now. You could allow S S uh, you could allow HTTPS traffic from the internet, which is port 443, which is a more secure shell layer from HTTP. So what that is, is it's just going to receive traffic only from the HTTP, from any website that... Say, for instance, if you were to look here, so you see here, this little, this, this, 
This little lock here is a sign that shows that this is a secure website. So it's not an HTTP port, which is port 80, but it's an HTTPS, which is uh, port number 443. So that's all that is. It says that you, if you select allow HTTP traffic from the internet, it's just gonna um, receive traffic just from HTTPS, not HTTP, but I don't like, I don't want it to be like that. So I'm gonna select the, the bottom here where it says allow HTTP traffic from the internet. So to set up an endpoint, for example, when creating a web server. So let's read here, it says that rule with source of any, any IP allow all IP addresses to access your instance. So we recommend settings, security group rules to allow access from known IP address only. So I don't want that. I will just leave this as it is. Now in the bottom here, you see it says configuration storage. So the storage size is eight gigabyte, but if you want to, you could manage more. You could put more gigabyte as you want. But as for me, I'm going to leave it like that because this is a free tier. If you read down here, you see I said that free tier eligible, I mean eligible customers can get up to 30 gigabyte of uh, elastic block storage, EBS, storage purpose, SD drive. So I don't need to make any change from that. And you see here, if you want to, you could add new volume into that, which I don't want. So I'm going to just go ahead and jump here where it says the advanced settings. So on the advanced settings, you see there's a purchase option, which is request spot instance. Um, so just, I mean, those terminologies on demand. So request spot instance at the spot price cap at the on demand price. So if you want, you could choose any one of those that meet your need. Now, I don't really need this, but what I will need is, sorry. What I will need is I will go down here. So once we need to explore them, I will skip all of those. So let's just scroll down, scroll all the way down at the bottom where there is a data, a user data is one we pass a script. So some comments to our EC2 instance execute on the first launch of our EC2 instances. So it's all the way down here. Now I prepare a little script for that. I'm gonna go ahead and just use it. Let me see if I hit that, would I be able to grab it? Yes, of course. So I can just copy my script here and just go back to this. Am I? And just, so all that is, is that, so we want to be able to pass this command right here. So for this, you go into your code as I been, and you got the EC2 fundamentals and then the EC2 user data that sh file you copy the entire the entirely this so all of it is you paste it there you paste it there so you so you so and that means that the script is going to be executed when the instance is first start and only once, okay? So in the whole life cycle of an instance and what's going to do it is that it's going to update a few things, then install the HT, HTTPD web server on the machine. And then write the file for HTML file and it will be a web server so you can, so you don't need to know code to be able to do that. So let's see, see the HTTPD and that got a code down here that's going to be executed once we launch our file. So let me see if I can make this 
just be on one page. So echo, bang, bang, bang. Let's move this. So all the echo, this is my first EC2 web server from AWS. And then I close this. Let's see if this what this needs a modification. HTML. Okay, so this look like it's all good. So to illustrate a few things on this lecture, so finally, for summary, we want to start one instance. A summary here, we want to start one instance and the software image, you could leave everything else as default. Like I say. So if you read here, you see it says that the free tier in your first year, including 750 hours of the T2 micro or T3 micro in the region in which the T2 micro is an available instances usage on the free tier AMI per month, 30 gigabyte. So let me go ahead and launch this instance. So the instance is being launched right now. It says it successfully, successfully initial, I mean, initiate launch of instance. So, um, let's check the status. If I go on EC2, if I look here, it says it's running. So my instance name is the Ubuntu server. And the instance ID is this. So the instance states is that it's running. If you look here, and the instance type is T2 micro. The status is initializing. The alarm status is no. If you want to set an alarm, is the availability zone is on the East US 1A. And it has a public IP address and the DNS. It's 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 it looks like it's have everything that we need. So let me click on this. So we can, so you, as you can see here, the detail of our instance is that the instance ID, the IPv6, the IPv4, there go the private IP address and the public, the public IPv4 DNS. I should see if we can find. So there go the public IP address for our instance. This is very important. You need to know that so you could log into your web server from from the web, I mean, from, from any web browser. Now, if you want to dig, I mean, dive deep here, there's the security side of it. So you could set the IAM wall for your instance, the owner ID, launch, launch time. When we launch our instance on Sunday, April 2nd, 2023rd, and the time is on Eastern Day, daylight time. So what else do we have here? So that got the reason that we were told as we were was making our configuration into our instance. So let's just call back up here. Now this the network setup. You could come here and grab your public IP address for your instance too as well. You could open an address. There go the private IP address for our instance. Your VPC ID. This is pretty neat, isn't it? Ding, ding, ding. Storage, for instance, storage. We have everything here. Now the status check. 
the status check just to check to see if you can get a report of your instance, if it's healthy or not, monitoring tool and stuff like that. So there's a lot here that we can explore with this instance here with AWS. So it says that CPU utilization is at zero. We just create this instance. The status check, I'm not sure why it says fail. And every, every report that you need here for your Ubuntu web server. Now, let me go ahead and grab this. You could grab the, the, the public IP address from here. You could copy it. And you can also grab it here also. There go it. And say if I would open a new window, let me just paste it here and hit enter. See what do we get? So we have a message saying that it's not secure, bling, bling, bling. So I'm gonna say continue. I'm not sure why it doesn't connect. It says refuse to connect for what? I'm not sure. Let's check again. So the status is it's running. So once the instance is running, we'll be able to connect to it. Now let's check something on the security. See what are the ports that we have open on this instance. So we have the port 80 and the port 222. All, both of them are TCP port and the source from any. So we should be able to log into this instance with just HTTP without the HTTPS. So now let's see something. Go back out again. Let's see what we have here. Say we load. I'm not sure why it doesn't connect, but let's see what we what are we using. Um, let's use Safari and see. If we can log into this instance, space, this IP address. Hmm. The Safari is filled. It's back over. Okay. So it's one in. Let's go here. Say open your address and see. Because you can also connect into this instance by the DNS too as well. Let me try with the DNS. Not sure why it looks like it's so slow. We need to stop the instance, reboot the instance, terminate the instance. If you don't want to get charged, see something like if you can connect. See if we can connect. So I'm connecting to the instance now. So there we go. I'm connecting to this instance now. So why we can't launch this instance? Let's back out and see.
close these. Not sure why. Now let's check here and see. Let's investigate to see what may have been the reason that we can't launch. We can't launch this web server. So there go the IP. Let's grab um, this. Paste it. Double check to see something here. He added this. Alien. This would group. Not sure what's going on. What says it pass all these? It's the public DNS, and I go to public IP. And that's the same IP we use in here, right? What is so monitor is disabled? Get the keeper. So we have here an instance. Okay. Let's check this code here down here and see. It's going advance. Okay. So maybe. We didn't select this while we do that. So basically, there should be, oh, sorry. See if we could grab the code that we've made and just, just copy it back out, move this. So it's blend the dash. I call these use. Use this for our user data. And we can move this. So install. HTTPD. Version 2. So yum update um dead minus y let's try it again yum update minus y http 
cyst control. So cyst control start HTTPD and cyst enable HTTPD. Cyst enable HTTPD. So we get echo. She'll just be all the way. Okay, so sorry. So we get echo. Okay, I see what a mistake may be. So see this. Then we move that. H1. Make this P. This is my first EC2, EC2, Ubuntu web server. I could, I could put anything, Ubuntu, Ubuntu web server. And I should close the H1. So close the H1 and the far www.html.index.html. So let me see something here. So my keeper. Launch this instance again. What is it says? Invalid and based. Edit instance. Configuration. Let's remove that. So launch this instance. I right, successfully. Let me see launch log. So it's past these. Create the build, connect to the instance, create, bang, bang, bang. We have the load balancer. Let's say go on view all instances. I'll just remove this one here. This one that's selected, let's terminate it. It looks like it's a second instance that we that we create as opposed to the one that we had. Delete this instance. So the status check is still not being updated yet. So let's just refresh this before we will try to connect to this.
or this Ubuntu web server. Okay, so this pain terminated though. Are you sure you won't terminate this instance? Yes. Now there's one that's running. So let me go to the one that's running. Let me not worry about this one. Let's grab its public IP address. And let's see if we can connect to this. You are seeing this warning because this this does not support HTTPS. So. Go here. So the status is still check help. It doesn't pass it yet. The instance is terminated. We have one instance is that although it's not secure, it's on EC2. So, and if we go to, to one instance is that's one in, it's this one, bang, bang, bang. But if we is oh this one is terminated of course it is so this sentence is running and one is terminated so let's see if we can open this instance I'm not sure why it doesn't display this. The, I mean, the web server doesn't display the code that we're running, but this is basically how it should work. So for the sake of not making this video too, too long, one day if I should just stop this right then and investigate in depth to see what the matter is. Everything looks okay. Everything looks okay. I'm just not sure why we can connect to it.
Let me try something and see. Terminate this instance too. Read another instance. Punch this instance and see. And if this doesn't work, we'll hand this video here.
Hey guys, let me just end this video here because I mean, it looks like it doesn't want to, your web server don't want to display and I don't want to waste your time. So I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.